Good morning, beloved, and welcome to our virtual worship service for this, the first Sunday in the month of March. Yeah. Yeah. We are here at the invitation of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, yeah. for it was he that said to all of us, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Yes. Serve the Lord with gladness. Yes. Come before his presence with singing. Yes. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. Yes. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. Yes. We are his people, yes. and the sheep of his pasture. Yes. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, yes. and into his courts with praise. Yes. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. Yes. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Thank you. 
for the opportunity that he has given us to just have a word with him yes. in that sweet hour of prayer. That's right. We are now ready for our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Lord, yeah. draw all men unto me. Amen. Just before the appeal for the offering, I'd like to take a moment just to thank all of the members, the various ministries of our church, all of our friends, those who watch our virtual services. Many of you sent your love offerings and donations to this pastor as we celebrated on last Sunday our 35th pastoral anniversary. Amen. And certainly on behalf of myself, my wife, and my family, we our deepest thanks go out to each and every one of you. Even if you didn't do anything, but just keep us in prayer. Amen. Lift us up in prayer. Amen. God to continue to bless us as we continue on this journey. Yes. I'd also like to thank my dear friend, Reverend Dr. Alan Paul Weaver, the pastor of Bethesda Baptist yes. Church. Amen. For that marvelous yes. and soul-stirring yes. sermon yes. that he brought to us on last Sunday. Mm -hmm. Forever. Forever. We didn't get a chance to listen to it. Amen. Uh, you could go to YouTube or Facebook at any time Amen. and listen to that message. Amen. Now, my brothers and sisters, it's offering time. Yes. And as we have been saying down through the weeks, you can contribute to this ministry if you feel that God has used it to be a blessing to you by sending your checks or money orders payable to Fountain Spring Baptist Church and mailing them to Post Office Box 644, Osley, New York, 10502. Or you could give by way of Givelify. Look for Fountain Spring Baptist Church with the address 2011 Grand Concourse. Or you can give by way of Zelle to Fountain Spring Baptist Church, BC, at gmail.com. You can also give by way of cash app to dollar sign Fountain Spring. We want to let you know we thank you for all your gifts and remind you that all things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. We are now ready for our congregational hymn. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Say the wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see.
holy temple. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent. Let all the earth keep silent before him.
which come now to this, the first Sunday in the month of March. The fourth Sunday in this month, we will join together on Palm Sunday. And one month from now, on the first Sunday in the month of April, we will be celebrating Resurrection Sunday morning. I've often thought that we just can't jump right into Palm Sunday nor Resurrection Sunday without giving some background. How did we get to Palm Sunday? How did we get to Good Friday? How did we get to Resurrection Sunday morning? Really, the story is told of how we got there from one end of the Bible to the end. But for the next few weeks, we want to consider a few passages that will help us to understand this journey that takes us along with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to Palm Sunday, his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. To Good Friday, yes. his crucifixion, yes, yes, yes. and then to Resurrection Sunday morning. Yes, yes. Let us pray. Amen. Our Father and our God, we come once again before your most holy and divine presence. We come, O oh God, as humbly as we know how, yes. truly without form nor fashion. Yes. We come before you because there's no one no one else that we could turn to. Yes. For you have told us in your word, and we do believe that it is in you that we live, move, and have our being. Yes. It's all because of you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. You're the author and the finisher of our faith. Yes. You provide everything that we need because we are your children. So we come once again, Father God, praising your holy name. Yes. Indeed, you are worthy of all the praise, all the honor, all the blessing. Yes. Now, Lord, speak to us as only you can. Yes. Speak, Lord, so that your servants will hear. Yes. Now, Lord, have your own way. Oh, yes, have your own way. Yes. For truly thou art the potter and we are the clay. Yes. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. 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 There are many places where we can begin this journey. But for today, I'd like to start off in the third chapter of the Gospel according to St. John. Let us consider verses 14 and 15. Jesus said in verse 14 and 15, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That's right. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We'd like to use for a thought or a subject this morning God's remedy for sin. Amen. God's remedy. For sin. Yes. I was thinking that perhaps I would title it God's vaccine mm -hmm. for sin yes. because of the circumstances that we are now in. Mm -hmm. But I decided against vaccine because some vaccines don't last long. Some vaccines, as you know, such as the flu vaccines, is something you got to take every year. Yeah, right. Even some of the current vaccines that we hear about now are vaccines that you got to take two shots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. 
But I decided we ought to call it God's remedy. Yes. Because right. yes. with God's remedy, yes. you only got to do it once. Yes. Okay. You don't have to come back in for another shot. Right. Right. When you come back, you're not coming back for another shot. You're coming back to say thank you. All right. Thank you. Coming back to say hallelujah. hallelujah. Coming back to say the name of Jesus yes, is so yes, sweet. Yes, yes, yes. God's remedy for sin. Yes, we recognize early in scripture that God points out the fact that man's remedy, man's so-called remedy for sin is not sufficient. Yes, That's right. Early on in Genesis chapter 3, when man had sinned and disobeyed God, and when God came down to inquire as to what they had done, and Adam said to God, we hid ourselves because we were naked. Yes. God said to him, what have you done? That you realize that you're naked and man began to explain that the woman that you gave me ate of the tree and gave me to eat. And when God dispatched his judgment upon the man, the woman, and the serpent, before you close out that chapter three, it declares that whereas man, Adam, and Eve had previously found some fig leaves and sewn them together mm -hmm. to cover up their nakedness. Yeah. Their, 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 their attempt at mm -hmm. finding a remedy for their sin. Mm -hmm. They use fig leaves. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the writer of Genesis says that God at the conclusion of that chapter yeah, sure, huh? brought them some coats of skin. In other words, the only way that he could have provided them with coats to cover up their nakedness yeah. made of yeah. skin, blood had to be shed. Yeah. That's right. Some animal lost their life. Yeah. Yeah. That was God pointing in the direction that without the shedding of blood, yeah. there is no remission yeah. of sin. Right. And so we pick up early in John's gospel. Now, a man by the name of Nicodemus shows up by night yeah, yeah. seeking to have a conversation with Jesus. Yeah, sure. Nicodemus starts off by saying to Jesus, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. Notice he used the plural. We know. Yeah. He didn't say I know. But he said, we know. Now, Nicodemus was a Pharisee, a member of the council. And by his own admission, he says to Jesus, we know. In other words, we've been talking about you. We've had conversations about you. We've heard that you're going around doing marvelous things. And, 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 and your name has been the center of our conversation. And I want to let you know, Jesus, that we know that thou art a teacher sent from God. Yeah. Jesus goes on and says to Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Yeah, they go on in this discussion. And we come to a familiar point in this third chapter of John. For it is written in John chapter 3, 16, a verse that you all know so well. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But before you get to the John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus wants you to take note that in the two verses that preceded it, Jesus said the words of our text, 
as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. My brothers and sisters, I, 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 I dare say that when Jesus quotes something that happened previously in Scripture, that it helps us to understand what's going on if we go back and try to find the incident or the, the setting of what he's referring to. Mm -hmm. This is what Jesus says and talks about Moses lifting up a serpent in the wilderness is found in the 21st chapter of the book of Numbers. That's right. The 21st chapter in the book of Numbers tells us that there came a time, according to verse 4, that as the children of Israel journey from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea, they came to the land that compassed or was near the land of Edom. And there the children of Israel did once again as they had did so many times before. Yes. For it is written that the soul of the people was much discouraged yes. because of the way. In other words, because of the journey that God had taken them on, they became discouraged. Yeah. And that lets me know that we ought not to become discouraged yeah. no matter what our journey is. Yeah. Scripture reminds us that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And not only are they ordered by the Lord, but sometimes those steps take you through the valley. Yeah. Sometimes those steps take you to the water. Sometimes the steps take you to the fire or up high mountains, but you ought not be discouraged. If you're being led by God, God promised that he would never leave you nor forsake you. But it says here that they were much discouraged because of the way. And when they got discouraged, the people, the children of Israel, began to speak against God and against Moses. Wherefore, they said, had he brought us out here from Egypt to this wilderness to die? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loatheth this light bread. Yes. Now, they forgot about the fact that when they got on the other side of the Red Sea and they complained about the fact there was no water that God told Moses to strike the rock and out of that rock flowed living cool water. They forgot about the fact that when they were hungry, God told Moses to tell them, go to sleep at night. And when you wake up, you're going to find food right at your tent door. They forgot about the fact that God protected them from all of their enemies because they were much discouraged. They began to complain against God and Moses. But God heard their complaint. That's right. And God decided that he would deal with them for a little while. Good. For it's recorded in the seventh chapter that God says sends fiery serpents among the people. Mm -hmm. And these fiery serpents would bite the people. And when the fiery serpents bit anyone, they would die. And so the people repented from their sins. And they came again to Moses and they confessed. They said, we have sinned against the Lord and against thee. They begged Moses, pray to the Lord that he would take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Moses, I want you to make out of brass, a fiery serpent. Mm -hmm. And I want you to put that serpent on a pole. Yes. And I want you to lift that pole high up. Mm -hmm. And whenever anyone is bitten by the fiery serpent, mm -hmm. if they're able to look to the serpent that you made out of brass, yeah. that you're hanging on a pole, yeah. that they would not die, yeah. that they would live. That's right. And so that's what Jesus quotes here in this third chapter of John. Yes. 
He says it's the same way that God commanded Moses to make a serpent out of brass yeah. and to attach it on a pole yeah. and lift it high. Yeah. And those who have been bitten by a serpent, notice he uses a serpent yeah. taking us back to the garden of Eden. Yeah. Those who have been bitten by that deadly serpent, yeah. if they were just able to look, look. to the pole, and see the brass serpent that you made. Because it was a serpent that bit you, that killed you, and so too it must be a serpent that's going to heal you. If they looked to that serpent, they would live. And so Jesus quotes that and says, even as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That's right. mm -hmm. Jesus is prophesying and predicting his own manner of death. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He says, my death, he doesn't explain it all right now, but when we look backwards, we realize that Jesus was talking about himself. Yeah. Yeah. In the same way that by man came sin into the world, even so God said, by man must sin be cured and have a remedy for him. And so since Adam, even so in Adam, all died. Even so in Christ, shall all be made alive. Yeah, yeah. Jesus says, if I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. All you got to do is look to Jesus and live. Look to him and believe in his word. Believe in him. And Jesus declared, you will have life. Amen. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Once that's done, the fulfillment of the next verse comes to being. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That he would be lifted up in a place called Calvary, yeah. that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Yeah. That's God's remedy for sin. Yeah. Man messed up. Yeah. Man disobeyed God. Yeah. Man fell from his holy estate. Yeah. But only God could cure sin. Yeah. Oh yes, Adam may have tried to cure his sin, Abraham may have tried to cure sin. Yes. Moses may have tried to cure sin. Yes. Joshua and all the Old Testament prophets may have tried to cure sin. Yes. But God and only God yes. has the remedy for our sin. Yes. What can take away my sin? Nothing, Nothing. but the blood Nothing. of Jesus. Yes. What Nothing. can make me whole again? Nothing. Nothing. But the blood of Jesus. Yes. Jesus declared that even as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Yes. It kind of reminds me of a song in our hymn book. Mm. It's entitled, Look and Live. Mm. It says, I got a message from the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. A message, oh, my friends, for you. Yes. It's recorded in his word, hallelujah. Yes. Jesus said, it and it, I know it's true. Yes. The chorus says, look and live. Yes. My brother, live. Yes. Look to Jesus now and live. Yes. For it's recorded in his word, hallelujah. Yes. And it's only that you look and live. Yes. Jesus gave to us a key, hallelujah, yes. in the garden of Gethsemane. If you tell him on your knees, hallelujah, he will hear you and will give you your ease. Look and live. My friends, live. Look to Jesus Christ and live. For it's recorded in his word, hallelujah, and it's only if you look and live. I don't know about you. But I'm glad that one day I got that remedy for sin. See, in order to get a remedy for 
whatever ails you, you need to go to the doctor. I can recall Jesus saying to the Pharisees and the Sadducees when they began to murmur and complain that Jesus always hung around sinners and publicans. Jesus, what did he say to them? Jesus says, the sick, the well, those who are well have no need of a physician. But those who are sick and know that they're sick, they know that they need to go to the doctor. And I don't know about you, but I found out that Jesus is a mighty good doctor. Or he can heal you of what ails you. Not just what ails you on the outside, but more importantly, he can heal you. He can heal you from what ails you on the inside. Oh, hallelujah. There's something on the inside that caused a division between God and man. But God got the answer. And I'm so glad not only did he have the answer, but he has the remedy. And in the weeks to come, we're going to talk about the remedy and the method that God used to cure us from sin. How can you cure a sin sick soul? Somebody raised the question, and the answer came back, there is a bomb in Gilead that can cure a sin-sick soul. There is a bomb in Gilead, Gilead that will make the wounded whole. I'm so glad I got that bomb a long time ago. And that bomb that I found in Gilead, his name is Jesus. He's a doctor in the sick room. He's a lawyer in a courtroom. He's a friend that will stick closer than a brother. Have you tried him? I don't care what you're going through. Have you tried him? All you need to do is to look to Jesus Christ and live. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You've been better to me. Then I've been to myself. Yes, yes. Look to Jesus, yes. Christ, and live. Yes. 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 Yes.
you, Lord. Amen. The word of God has been preached. And now it's our hope and prayer that God has used this ministry to lift up the name of Jesus in your hearts and minds. It's our prayer that somebody in whose viewing today has received that remedy for sin. If that's the case in your life, we pray that you'll find a church home where the gospel is being preached and taught. And by chance, if you're having a problem finding a church in your area, or if you'd like to become a member of this ministry, drop us a line and we'll tell you what you have to do. But until then, may God bless and keep you and yours. God bless you. Amen. 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 And this being the first Sunday in a brand new month, we do at this time, as we always do on the first Sunday, and just in case we've never reminded you, each and every first Sunday, you can join us as we partake of our Lord's Supper. Yes. The scripture tells us that just before Jesus was arrested, tried and crucified, that he met with his disciples, his friends, in a place called the Upper Room, there to keep the Passover, as God has commanded, had commanded the children of Israel to keep ever since the days of Moses. Scripture tells us that when they had finished eating of the Passover, Jesus began to talk to them about some things that would happen in a very short period of time. He told them, for instance, that one of you will betray me. He told them that he would be turned into the hands of sinful men. And he told them that yes, he would be crucified. But before that happened, he instituted something that we have been doing for over 2,000 years. Yes. The gospel writers tell us, and Paul reminds us, that on that fateful night before he was betrayed, he took bread in his hands yes. and he lifted up his eyes to his heavenly Father and prayed to God upon the bread. When he finished the prayer, he passed the bread to his disciples, told them to eat of it, for it represented his broken body. When they had finished eating of the bread, he took the cup in his hands, and when he had once again given thanks to his heavenly Father, he passed this cup to his friends, his disciples, told him to drink all of it, for it represented his spilled blood, yes. which would be spilled for many for remissions of sins. As we have often said, we have no way to less consecrate the elements that we will now partake of. And so as Jesus did, we will go to God the Father in prayer. Yes. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, it is once again that we have come to this time where we pause to partake of your bread and your cup. Thank you, we do this in remembrance of your Son and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. For he will see that commanded us as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup we do show forth his suffering until he comes again. Yes, and so now, Lord, as we prepare to take up this bread and drink of this cup, we bring it and we lift it up to you. Yes. We ask, Lord, that you will do what only you can do best. Change it from its common, ordinary use into a spiritual use. Yes. Change it so much, Father God, until when we eat, we will think of his broken body. Yes. Change it so much, Father God, so that when we drink, we will envision in our mind's eye his spilt blood yes. flowing down from Calvary 
So much so until somebody penned the words that there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners like us plunge beneath that blood, lose all our guilt and stain. Yes. Fix it, Lord. Yes. Fix it for us. This is our prayer in thy son Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. 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 And now I wash my hands to show the purity of the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. said Jesus took the bread and gave thanks to his heavenly father and broke it and passed it to his disciples and told them that this bread represents his broken body eat ye all of it and then finished eating of the bread he took the cup in his hands when he had once again given thanks, he passed the cup to his disciples, told them to drink all of it. But this is a blood, his blood of a New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. finish eating and drinking he told them as often as you do eat of this bread and drink of this cup you do show forth my suffering until I come again scripture tells us that when they finished they went out into the mouth of olives they sung a hymn we have no mouth of olives to go out into but we have a sinful wicked evil city to return to. Therefore, we ought to watch as well as pray. Amen. And as we go, we can go with a song in our heart. Yes. I heard somebody say, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know
we thank you this day. We thank you, God, for the blood. We thank you for that healing blood. Yes. And now those who desire prayer for whatever the reason, we ask that you approach the altar. Yes, even in this virtual service, you can have an altar right there in your home. You can go to God in prayer wherever you are. Come, Reverend Jennings, and lead us through the room once again.